Thank you, and um, Lucy and Nick especially, thank you all for inviting me to come and represent the Association of Zoos and Aquariums today. This will be a little different than what we've been listening to all day, although it will be a little bit of a status report in terms of the status of uh, sawfish in aquaria in the U.S. Um, this will be the only time we use the word aquaria. I'm from Dallas, Texas, and so we say aquariums. So, uh, because that's what they named it in the program, that's what it's going to say. But everywhere else in anything I do, it says uh, it says aquariums, huh? Aquarium is it? Well, that's a darn good thing. Uh, <laughs> I, I'm, I'm quite pleased and proud to show those of you who've not seen Living Sawfish uh, some really beautiful images that have been compiled. And I must tell you that uh, what I'm going to present to you is not necessarily my information. It's information from the colleagues that I have throughout the U.S. and uh, related organizations uh, to our U.S. facilities that have sawfish in their aquariums and they have been very gracious to send me those images. This one does actually happen to be taken from the facility where I work at the Dallas Royal Aquarium in downtown Dallas, Texas. This was taken by one of our biologists during our dive on Friday. Uh, so it's also very current and we have three uh, Pristus Microdon which uh, now I guess they're Pristus Pristus, which make them uh, in the natural range of the Gulf of Mexico, which is very interesting. Uh, so, just a little bit of history real quickly about the Association of Zoos and Aquariums. How many of you all have ever heard of the AZA, besides Heather? Oh, yeah, excellent. Fantastic. They'll be happy to hear that. Um, we are a nonprofit organization uh, dedicated to the advancement of accredited zoos and aquariums in the areas of animal care, um, husbandry conservation, education, science, recreation. Uh, we do work a great deal with our federal agencies. In fact, I get the great pleasure every year or so as part of the Government Affairs Committee to go to Washington, D.C. and help to lobby for funding for organizations like NOAA and National Marine Fisheries and U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service. So, um, Right now, our 224 accredited institutions see about 180 million visitors a year, which is more than any sporting event or movies. Um, AZA focuses on connecting people and animals and provides a critical link to helping animals in their nat native habitats. This is just a little graphic of some of the things we put up on World Ocean Day every year. Um, little bits of things for our guests to learn even more, especially in our landlocked aquarium. Uh, we also partner with some of our local regulatory agencies at the, in the heart of Dallas. We're a very large hub for import of items. Uh, lately we get a lot of corals and things from Indonesia, but a few weeks ago the U.S. Fish and Wildlife agents at DFW asked if we would have any need uh, to use in our education program some sawfish rostrums that they received, or confiscated I should say. And uh, it, was, it was timing is everything, but uh, Lyle had literally just been in the United States for a conference and had spent a couple of days visiting in Dallas and I had texted him that picture and said, tell me which species that is, and it was uh, um, an oxypristus, I guess, and uh, I had never seen that before, so uh, maybe one day soon when they get their paperwork straightened out, then we'll be able to display those in some capacity to our visitors at the aquarium, which is really interesting. Um, we have the great fortune in the AZA to uh, teach a lot of programs to adults and children, so Every year, more than 12 million people attend one of our education programs. Uh, we dedicate millions of dollars annually to conservation education, and more than 9 million students visit our on-site programs. And of those each year, 3 million of uh, those children receive those programs for free. Um, every year when we do World Ocean Day, we have a art contest with some of the local school children, one of the local schools. This past year, I went to a school in East Texas, which is about 90 miles outside of Dallas in uh, the East Fork of the Trinity River, where these kids are in a very rural area. And 88 children drew what they thought, after I talked to them about ocean conservation, what they thought. And they had been on a field trip to the Dallas World Aquarium, which they had to get grants to come to do. Uh, and so they posted their pictures all over the wall on World Ocean Day. And I just love this one with the little girl in the tunnel. And she chose to draw our big uh, sea turtle, one of our bonnet head sharks, and the sawfish. So I thought that was fantastic. So it's not often that uh, children in the middle of a rural uh, country area get to see a sawfish. 
Uh, so they've beat some of you all to that <laughs> punch, I would say. Um, AZA, zoos, and aquariums are very uh, much involved in conservation programs throughout the world, not just in our backyard, but around the world. The Dallas World Aquarium actually has sponsored a uh, manatee center in Iquitos, Peru, called the Cobia DWA Zoo, that over the past several years has actually rehabilitated and re released eight young Amazonian manatees. Um, these are some pictures from one of the first releases. They sort of have a stage release program, but we actually fund the work from uh, local biologists that over the past several years have educated more than 70,000 people in their area about the need to protect manatees. Um, but as an industry, we support over 4,000 field conservation and research projects in more than 100 countries. And I know that WCS is also huge in terms of in-situ work. We also have managed breeding programs uh, known as SSP programs that involve both AZA members and non-members. And uh, the mission of those programs is to cooperatively manage specific typically threatened or endangered species populations within our zoos and aquariums and their related facilities. Um, so programs like lowland gorillas and rhinoceros, giant river otters, penguins, and now even some of the fish species. We are organized into taxon advisory groups. I happen to be the secretary of the Marine Fish Taxon Advisory Group. And we have done now our second regional collection plan, which means we get together as institutions and members. We tell each other what we have in our collections, what we plan on having in our collections, and what we think our space needs are going to be from the future, what's breeding, what's not breeding, that sort of thing. And then we tease out of that uh, programs that we would like to manage. And the sawfish, when we first established our regional collection plan, uh, the sawfish was, was the top of the list of uh, species that we felt like we needed to be involved in with their protection and that we needed to be more organized in our programs. So uh, the, Rip, the folks at the Ripley's Aquarium, uh, who have two aquariums in the United States, have uh, spearheaded that program. And you can actually see these are some of their sawfish there in their facility. Um, so in November 2011, our first stud book was published. It's very simple at this point. It involves just our living collection right now in our facilities within the US. There is one facility in Hong Kong, Ocean Park, which is an AZA member, and one non-AZA member, which is uh, Minnesota, used to be called um, Underwater World, but it's now Underwater Adventures Mall of the Americas. It's not an AZA member, but they do have sawfish, so they're included in our book. And then another AZA member, the um, Atlantis Resort in the Bahamas, is uh, also included in that stud book. So I know this is tiny and I don't expect you to see this, but basically this is the list of those facilities and the numbers of each uh, species uh, in their collection. And again, this is the living collection here. Um, according to that stud book, the Pristus Microdon, which is now going to have to be Pristus Pristus, I suppose, uh, is composed of 18 individuals, 12 males and 6 females located at 7 different facilities. Okay, uh, the population of Zizeron is 14 individuals, 8 males and 6 females. Uh, the Pristus pectinata population is 13 individuals, 6 males and 7 females. And that has grown tremendously with the birth of some uh, Pristus pectinata at the Atlantis Resort in the Bahamas. So I'm quite proud to be able to display these pictures to you, uh, given graciously by the folks at that facility. This is their staff as they're getting ready to ultrasound their large female. Now she's been pregnant several times over the years, but has always given birth to stillborn pups. But this time she produced six of them. And uh, uh, four of them are still doing quite well, and I'll show you some pictures in a minute. Uh, first sawfish in the US was displayed in 1930 at the Shedd Aquarium when they first opened. That was a Pristus pectinata. We're still learning about the longevity of these animals. Uh, but based on the animals in our living collection, the average number of years for Prisus Microdon in our collections right now is 7.8. Most of those appeared in the, in the mid, uh, early to mid 2000s, sorry. Uh, Prisus Pectinata has been around a lot longer in our collection, so the average number of years in our facilities is 20 plus years, including uh, one animal that had been to several different aquariums that lived more than 44 years in an aquarium. Uh, the average length of time that zizron has been there so far, and again, they came in the early part of this decade, or, is, or last decade, 
was 8.7 years. And mortality has been quite low, fortunately. Um, although this stub book is in its infancy, this is um, uh, just the beginning. But you can see these are our four newest members of our stud book right here. And this picture was taken when they were about a week old. Uh, one of the challenges that we face is being able to breed these animals because of the, the way that they're dispersed between uh, facilities and also uh, the inability uh, to import them uh, at the moment uh, will hamper some of our breeding activities. One of the things that we're working on as an industry is um, some ways to uh, get better at breeding them or, or segregate our animals specifically for breeding. So the Aquarium of the Americas has, is uh, writing a formal proposal to use their facility in New Orleans, uh, which is a quite a large facility with holding areas for pups. And basically, uh, the plan would be not only to uh, put the animals together to breed, but also to capture their genetic material, um, especially for artificial insemination. The Aquarium in the Americas and the folks at Audubon are quite good at uh, cryo preservation and things like that. So. Uh, sperm and egg retrieval, sperm and egg cryogenic storage and everything and the hope would be that we would have uh, living specimens uh, to continue to see rather than this that I saw at the uh, Whale Harbor Inn when I was down there in, in uh, end of March. That was on the wall there. This is the types of research that we do in aquariums and the things that we can do. Yeah, <laughs> um, We can uh, provide a great forum for collaborative research uh, between field biologists and genetics, uh, endocrinologists, all kinds of things. This is the folks at, at uh, Atlantis doing some ultrasound work. Uh, this is a pup. There was one pup that had been killed on accident by its mother shortly after its birth. It sliced right through it. And there was one pup that was premature and, uh, and was stillborn. And so they necropsied that and took a lot of uh, pictures and, and samples from that. This is actually the yolk sac that have gotten a hand right there. Um, so lots of life history information to be learned from these animals. A lot of ways that we can contribute to the things that you all do in terms of blood work and that type of thing. Uh, I do want to invite you all to our next husbandry symposium. If you're not familiar with it, back in 2001 we had a uh, Alaskan Bank husbandry symposium that produced a hardbound manual uh, of everything there is to know about keeping elasmobranchs in aquariums. Um, it also involved all kinds of field researchers and things. This will be held in Monterey coming up next year in October and uh, you can now download the original husbandry manual all offline and the same type of proceeding will be produced. So you'll be seeing call for papers coming out very soon for that. Uh, but because of those 180 million people that come through our doors, we feel like we have a very powerful voice in terms of being the voice for outreach for the programs that you all do and the work that you all do. We can certainly help you to promote that. We can help raise funds for that. We can be a conduit between the field and the public uh, because we can put people face to face uh, with a living sawfish and inspire uh, the desire to preserve them. And certainly as, as trained uh, biologists at most of the aquariums and zoos, in the AZA, we have the manpower to help in terms of volunteer programs and things like that to help with the projects that you do. Um, so we are connecting people to create conservation solutions. And you can see this is our tunnel on Friday morning full of uh, school children uh, taking a look at our graphics. Um, so we look forward to the opportunity to join with you all uh, in helping to conserve sawfish and look forward to the opportunity to collaborate with you in many ways uh, to make that happen. So thank you very much. Thank you.